And how y'all doing out there? What's happening? This video today going to be about Steve Wilkes not getting his job with the Carolina Panthers and they hiring Frank Reich. Now, Frank Reich, who I liked as a Buffalo Bills fan, backup quarterback, the greatest comeback I've seen in the postseason because he's in Orleans back in the day. And um, got to coach the Indianapolis coach for the past few years. You know, I think he's a decent coach. I mean, I understand, you know, they trying to say, well, maybe get like a little Doug Peterson flash, maybe like a little broke version of Jim Harbaugh when he coached the 49ers. I mean, you know, if you can do that. And he had little touches of flair. Um, he had Phillip Rivers at the end of his career. The Indianapolis Colt gig ended up becoming like a rest haven for wash quarterbacks. So you have Phillip Rivers and then you had Carson Wentz. And they didn't really turn out to much anything. And, of course, Jeff George. So you look at that situation. And, you know, the Colts, that, you know, with that. But he couldn't really do it up the job. So it's kind of hard to say because Jeff Sarity comes behind him. And that was a nightmare. You saw how some of them games went for the Colts post-Frank Wright. Oh, okay. But now we go over to the Carolina Panthers where, Ron, where Rule, Matt Rule didn't really do much for them. And with Sam Darnold in a situation, and of course you had Baker Mayfield and all that. Steve Wilkes comes in, turns the program to a six and six team. They almost give the Tampa Bay Buccaneers all they can handle for that NFC South title. They're within a game or so of, of the division, and he he does something with Sam Darnold. They were playing a decent football for a moment, not not no world beaters, but and they weren't like the Detroit Lions. You know, but they were making an impressive what he did. And as usual, because the NFL stands for Negroes forget leadership, just like his job in Arizona, got him up out of there. And then they bring in Frank Wright. And it is a racial issue in the NFL with the head coaching, you know, for all, you know, let to use the Jay-Z, we move past the knee and everything. And we got all the slogans about in racism, we can come together, but they don't. They contradict themselves right before your eyes. What do they think that people are walking around with Stevie Wonder glasses on? They hardly want any black head coaches, and they sure as heck don't want anybody black calling them out on their racism, institutionalized and systematic. Yes, Steve Wilkes should have a job. He should have had that Carolina Panther job. I can respect Frank Wright to a to a point, you know, as a definitely as a person, as a coach, yeah, right. but he shouldn't have gotten this job over over uh, Steve Wilkes. That's blatant racism. But that's good old boy country, Carolina. You know, that's just what the good old boys do. And they got quotas, you know. He did a great job with Sam Donald. Nobody, Dad, you stuck with Sam Donald and Baker Mayfield? Yeah, you did a credible job. You should almost get coach of your consideration. But you know how the NFL stands for Negroes forget leadership. You know how I go. Anyway, that's my thoughts. It takes about Steve Wilkes not getting the job for Reich are, and that's why – um, Brian Flores got that lawsuit against the NFL, how they treat head coaches with their racist ways. Please hit like, subscribe, welcome thoughts and comments, and I do respond. Thank you. Um, wash your hands, keep your mind clear, watch out for nothing, share the video if you want to, and um, believe me, it's going to be more about this, because that cat should have gotten a job, and he definitely did a good enough job to keep the job, but you know how the good old boy network works, and you see that Jeff Sarity is getting uh, set consideration for the indie job, even though He's in over his head because they sucked and he was getting blowed out. I'm out.